Hello everybody, greetings from the dank basement. I am your wicked Uncle Squinty, Paul Shalbetter, with a little bit of a tobacco impression for you. Last week we took a look at the aged burly flake from Solani. I have already smoked through that complete 50 gram tin and now I am ready for this. This is the McBaron HH burly flake. I'm certain I'm not displaying it correctly, but you can find it. I did and I'm blind. No problem. This is uh, blended by, I believe it's Pear, is how it's pronounced, Pear Jensen from McBaron in Denmark. And if you can't get a hold of your favorite Burley Flake, maybe it's aged Burley Flake or perhaps Burley Slices, uh, this is a really great one to try, I think. Here is the flake. I will hold it up for you and hopefully you will be able to see this. Maybe even put a little more light on it. There we go. Nice brown flake. In the tin, it's a little sour. It... <laughs> the crescendo surprised me. Uh, it's a little sour smelling. It doesn't have the cocoa notes, the strong cocoa notes that the aged Burley Flake from Solani had. Now right out of the tin, this flake seems, it's moist and it's supple, and it can actually bend the leaf, or the flake, you can see that, and bend it without it crumbling and falling apart. Uh, but I think it's going to be ready to smoke, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing I did with the aged burly flake, which is just to tear off a little strip, and I'm going to twist it into a very loose spiral, if I can. And now it's kind of falling apart. And I'll just stuff this right into the bowl. I'm using my um, Brigand, I think is the style of this pipe. It's a beautiful pipe, man. I love this. Oh, it's a pretty pipe. I love this. This was a gift from a good friend of mine in uh, Germany. And I, I appreciate this pipe so much. It's, it's a wonderful smoker. And I think the wide bowl is going to be absolutely essential to really appreciate the nuances in this particular flake. Now this is the first time I've ever had it. I just now cracked open the tin. We're going to rub it out a little bit here. Twist it around in the old mitts. Yeah, it rubs out beautifully. It just, no problems. And as you can see, well, you probably can't see it. I, maybe I can hold it in my hand and show you. I'll tip the camera a little bit. Maybe you can see. Anyway, that's kind of what it looks like after just a few seconds of rubbing. So it's pretty much ready to go. I'm going to pack that on top of the spiral that I just put in this pipe. It's a good thing I've got a tray. I am so messy when I rub out flakes, it just goes all over. So there's my second part of my three-part pack. And... I left a few shards of tobacco there. So now we've got it nicely, lightly packed in the bowl. It's about, in this pipe, doing what I just did, packing it this way with one flake, it's about two thirds of this bowl. So it's not quite up to the crown. I'm going to ignore the telephone because I'm doing this. You're more important. Besides, it's probably just President Trump calling to give me the Medal of Freedom for being such a great pipe tobacco reviewer. So let's give this a shot. Charring light. Daniel Shore Tamper. Thank you, Danny. I use this thing anytime I can. I love it. It's made out of a 22-250 uh, rifle cartridge. There is no gunpowder left in it, or primer, <laughs> or bullet. Okay, I charred it up. Let's give it a smoke. This is an unfiltered pipe. Funny thing is, my uh, first pipe of the day was also from McBaron, but it's uh, an off-the-shelf pouch tobacco. This is Seven Seas Regular, an aromatic, and to save peace in the house, I was smoking this most of the morning. Had a bowl full or two with my morning coffee. 
But we're now in the afternoon and I'm ready for a little more nicotine. But speaking of that, don't expect the same level of nicotine with this one as you get with the aged Burley Flake. I can already tell you after a couple of puffs, it's pretty mild by comparison, nicotine-wise. <coughs> I just swallowed spit wrong. Don't you hate when you do that? do a little snorkin action here. Now, unlike the aged burly flake from Solani, and I'm that's what I'm comparing this to basically. This has some Virginia in it. Now, the Virginia plays an interesting role here. For one thing, it heats up the burn a little bit. This still doesn't bite. It will not bite you at all. I can tell that right now. Uh It burns very cool. Dr. Fred Hanna told me once that the goal of pipe smoking is to not sense the temperature in the smoke. You shouldn't get hot smoke. It should be perceived as being cool in your mouth. Yeah, you can chooch the hell out of this, and it will not sting you. I guarantee it. Yeah, there's not a lot of cocoa to this. You get wood as much as anything else, and a tiny bit of grass and sweetness from the addition of some dark-fired Kentucky, and that... Virginia I was talking about. Now I suspect the Virginias in here are a mix of red and maybe bright Virginia. Not a lot of grass here, a little bit of sweetness, and frankly a little bit of heat from those Virginias, but very little. Brigantine is the name of this pipe. I knew I'd remember it. The Brigantine. Wonderful pipe and an amazing tobacco so far. I'm loving this to pieces. French inhale. Again, like many Burleys, this one is so mild that it is, unfortunately maybe, very easy to inhale without making your lungs clutch up on you uh, or giving you a cough. Uh, if you're a cigarette smoker, be careful of tobaccos like this because you will be able to inhale them probably more easily than a Marlboro Red, for instance. Um, you saw I took the tin or the flake right out of a fresh tin, popped open the tin, broke the seal seconds before I started recording this, and it was perfect right out of the tin, ready to be folded, stuffed cut into little cubes, however you like your flake tobacco. I generally like mine rubbed out a little bit. I think it burns better in most of the pipes I smoke Burleys in, uh, flake tobaccos in them. And um, also I, I like to play with my tobacco, don't you? I think it's part of the fun. I don't really need these sunglasses indoors. It's beautiful here today. What I'm doing sitting in the dank basement smoking and talking to you, I have no idea because it's absolutely gorgeous outside. And I think when I'm done with this pipe, I'll load up another one with something a little milder in the nicotine department and something I don't want to concentrate on particularly. Maybe some more of this uh, Seven Seas Regular, which I really like, and walk myself down to the store to buy some hamburger buns. We're doing burgers tonight. I might even pull out the grill. My wife, for my 50th birthday, uh, almost 12 years ago, 
gifted me with a Weber Gold Series charcoal burning old-fashioned kettle barbecue and you just put it outside and throw some Girl Scout water on it as we used to call it in Boy Scouts or rocket sauce I also like to call it get that blazed up you can cook till the cows come home and when they come home they just sit on the grill you cook them up and eat them Well, by the way, this version of Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin was performed by the Budapest Symphony Orchestra. The Budap I'm sorry, the Budapest Philharmonic Orchestra. It's a wonderful performance, and it's one of those CDs you can buy from a cutout bin. You know, I back in the day when I was buying CDs, this was super inexpensive, and it's a lovely recording. It also includes some uh, interpretations of the instrumental uh, scores for Porgy and Bess and An American in Paris. It's a nice record. This is sincere smoking pleasure. The character of this tobacco does not change radically through the bowl. Like the aged burly flake, what you start out with is pretty much what you get. There aren't any surprises, at least not so far. Let me use my trusty Danny Shore tamper, give it a light tamp again. This is fantastic. Yeah, if you puff on this a little too hard, it's not going to bite you, but you will feel the heat. As I said, the Virginias do add some sweetness and a little bit of rounding to what is basically a good but uncomplicated burly aroma and taste. But unfortunately, it does add just a tiny bit of heat to the blend. Nothing you can't handle. On the nicotine scale, where one is no nicotine whatsoever, lane 1Q would be a 1.5. Something like uh, 1792 Flake might be an 8, with 10 being potentially dangerous. This is slightly less strong than the aged Burley Flake from Solani I reviewed last week. This may be, although I love the Solani, this has more to it. This is a brilliant blend. I would like to shake the blender's tobacco blending hands. If I ever make it over to Copenhagen, I'm going to look up McBaron and see if I can meet the blender because this is a work of art. If you have not tried this yet, I suggest you do so. McBaron's H.H. Burley Flake, part of the H.H. series of fine tobaccos, genre tobaccos. Now, a lot of people talk about the H.H. Old Dark Fired, which I really love. But there are times when I need something a little lighter. And frankly, as a recovering cigarette smoker, a little bit more akin to the type of tobaccos blended into American cigarettes. Without all the chemicals, of course. Speaking of chemicals, this is not top dressed in any way. Uh, there is no, as I said, no exaggerated cocoa or nuts you get a little light cocoa like you always get with a good burly but it's mostly a woody pipey sort of taste how's the room note well i should probably ask my wife but on tobaccoreviews.com this is described as having a pleasant to tolerable room note i actually think it's from what i can smell of it from still being behind the pipe um It's a pleasant room note to me, and I think if I walk out and walk back into the room, I'll think the same thing. Now, obviously, I'm still smoking the pipe. I can't comment on aftertaste. So this is my first experience with this. 
but on the squinty scale of quality where one is this goddamn.